black preachers who are, are racist in their hearts. Uh, they, are, they are not called by God, but they've been called by their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Show is the only program in existence which deals straight up with black Americans. So-called civil rights leaders want them angry, dumbed down, and demoralized. It's not the leaders that blacks need, but good fathers and mothers. Welcome to the show. My name is Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me hear from you. We have our, we're going to put up our website, our email address, and phone number. I want to hear some feedback about these shows, this and other shows that you will be seeing. Um, my guest today is Pastor Rich, Richard and Donna Friday, and they're with Wings of Mighty Prophecy Church in Midland, Texas. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Glad to be here. All right. I want to get a little background about you for the audience. Uh, you guys married for how long? Who forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married, what, 27? 27? 27 years. 27 years. I'm waiting for him to answer here. Yeah, 27 years. 27. Passed that time. test already. All right. Uh, Pastor Richard, what was it about Donna that caused you to want to marry her? It's just that love that the Lord gives us, you know, and you know when it's the right one. So was it love at first sight? Sure was. It was. Is this yeah. your first and only marriage? No, it wasn't. How many times have you been married? Been before? married twice. You've been married twice before. No, once before. This is the second. Oh, this is the time. second marriage. Second time, right? All right. Was it the same for you, Donna? Mm -hmm. Love at first sight? Yes, I just needed more stability than anything, you know, because I was having some hard times. So. Is this your first marriage? No. How many times? My third marriage. This is your third. That's why I was looking for stability. I was really, really needing that. Uh, the other guys didn't have that? No, when it's kind of abuse in the family, it's kind of hard. Oh, know? okay. So it's kind of rough. I want to talk to you about marriage, uh, Christian marriage. Mm -hmm. How, you know, what is, what, what does it take to make a marriage last forever and ever until death do you part? And I'm glad that you guys admitted that you have been married, to be, married before because that would help us to understand how to get it going right this time. Yeah. But first, um, uh, Pastor Richard, Donna is a, is a pastor well. Your wife is a pastor. That's right. Uh, why did you allow that to happen? Well, I feel the Lord called both of us, you know. He put us together as one, uh -huh. and he called us both to preach the gospel. Oh, I see. And I tell you, as a strong wife as she is, she's pushed me a lot. It took some pushing to get me to go in. You know, oh, yeah? A lot of times the Lord tells you to do something, but you still need that certain person behind you to give you that shove. And, and so Donna pushed you forward. Right. Oh, I see. And Donna, are you stronger than Richard? I feel I am. You feel you are? Yeah. In what way? In prayer. Um, I do a lot of praying. I uh, praying for him, myself, and my family, and everybody. And I, you know, I like to go to war in prayer. Right. And anytime there's something going, you know, he's so busy with his job and everything else that I feel like I've got more time to do that praying for oh, him. I see. So I'm behind him. What uh, What is it like to be stronger than your husband? Well, I don't really feel like I'm really that much stronger. I feel equal. But I just feel like I'm his helpmate, like we're supposed to be. Right. And so I'm going to be there to help what I can do for him. And prayer is the best thing I can give him. Do you uh, preach from the pulpit? Yes. You do. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where a woman should be a preacher or, or a minister or pastor. Why is this, been, why is this so popular now uh, and is accepted by men of the church? Well, I feel, you know, God says we're neither male or female. So in God's eyes, he's not looking if it's a woman. He's not looking to see if it's a man. He's looking and saying, hey, are you giving me the word? Put out the word. He's calling us all right now. This, I feel this is the last times. God wants anybody that would get up there and preach the gospel to get up there. And that's why I feel like he's calling ladies. He's calling men. He's calling musical groups. He wants to get the gospel out there. He wants to get people saved any way he can. You know, if it takes a female, it takes a female. If it takes a male, she can reach people I can't reach. It's, we'll have people in the church call her and, 
and want to talk to her, you know. Then that, there's a few that wants to call and talk to me. Right. So it's just whoever they feel comfortable with, you know, that's the way we want to be. Donna, uh, is there a, a scripture in the Bible that you can point out to us that says that God calls women to become preachers? Mm-hmm. Which, which one? The scripture everybody stands on, John three sixteen. And what does that say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, and that's what we are, male or female, it's whosoever, will just believe in him. You know, that's what he died for. He died for us all, not just for the man. And then the man's supposed to cover the woman. He died for man and woman. But that doesn't that say that in that scripture. That doesn't say that a woman, woman? should be a preacher. And the reason I'm a, the reason mm -hmm. I'm asking this because I've noticed that. And correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. because I could be wrong. But I've noticed that whenever women take over, then everything goes to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> <laughs> for an example, yeah. uh, in the homes, whenever women take over the home, the kids end up screwed mm -hmm. up. You know, they end up on drugs, or they become they have sex out of wedlock. They end up angry, and and in the schools, when I noticed that most of the schools mm -hmm. where that are headed up by women, mm -hmm. you know, women are principals of schools, and the kids are just out of control. And in the church, whenever mm -hmm. women are taking over the church, things go bad. Uh, am I wrong by that, or am I seeing that in the right way? I think it's just the person themselves. That certain women. They want to be in control, okay? Right. They don't want to share. And it takes that special person that uh, will stand with their husband, not above their husband, because that's not their place. You know, a woman is to submit to the husband, but she's to help mate. Right. And like whenever I first met Richard, uh, we were both in the world really bad. And uh, I wanted to change. And there are three different people come up to me and said, what, well, don't pressure him. I said, you want to change? I said, you just pray for him. I said, you lay your hands on him at nighttime and pray for him. And that's what I did. Three people told me, that's three, three times God said, pray for him. And I did, and it wasn't just take two weeks. He got up one morning and said, let's go to church. So I was behind him, not above him. He wasn't a preacher when you first met him? Oh, no. no. Oh, I see. No. I didn't go to church. You didn't go at all? No, I didn't. Right. I didn't even want you talking about church to me. <laughs> Why is that? Why was that? Well, I, you know, I, I was a bad alcoholic. I, you know, I was just, I had bad temper. Really? I, she would actually look out the door and, you know, when I got off work, and if she could tell I was really drunk as I was walking up the door, they'd go out the back door with the kids, you know. <laughs> so. How many children do you have? We have four together. Oh, okay. And why were you an alcoholic and a bad and with a bad temper? I don't know. I've just always really had a bad temper, but till the Lord come in and and now you know I always used to have that male macho thing going on, you know. And I tell him in church now, so hey, I can cry pin drop now. I used to, I thought man didn't cry, you know. Yeah. Now I feel you know it takes more of a man to cry than, than it does for one just to hold back and act like he's tough, you know. <laughs> so you went from a, a macho man to a crybaby. Yep. Well, not a cry, baby, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, all right now. He cries a lot. But, really? Yeah, when the yeah. Holy Spirit moves on you, you know, your feelings go out towards somebody, yeah, I cry. And how do you feel when you see him crying a lot? I love it. You love to see him cry? Yes. Why? Because that's God inside. Oh, I see. Because that's passion inside for the one that changed him and the one that, that changed me and the one that keeps us together. You know, we fought really horribly. Um, I guess the first four four years. You fought? You know, uh, word-wise, right, you know. Right. And after the Lord came in and, and changed him, well, he changed me first, but then he came in and changed him, and it's been great. Right. I mean, he's went uphill all the way. There's never been a downfall for him. He just stayed with it. And so God's behind us all the way. Richard, uh, what were you... I mean, you don't know why you were angry. You was angry and an alcoholic, alcoholic in the past. You don't know why that was? No, I just drank. And, you know, some people that drink get to be real nice people. Some people, when they drink, they get ugly. 
Yeah. And I guess I was one of the ugly ones. You know? <laughs> and were you raised by both parents? Yes. Uh -huh. Father and mother. Right. And who were in charge of the, who was in charge of the home? My dad. Your dad. He yeah. did the discipline. Yeah. Were you mad at him about that? No. Nah. You were not. No. Nah. How about your mom? No. Nah, never had no problems with her. With your mother either? No. Nah, she just let her our dad handle it when he got home. She didn't do anything. Well, you know, just there for us, but as but far as discipline, that's no. And when your father would get home, she would tell him what what you did, and he would correct you? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and mainly, he corrected my brothers more than he did me. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I was the better kid. <laughs> were, you the, were you the oldest or the youngest? No, I, was, I have two older brothers than, than myself and one younger brother, oh, I see. one older sister. And when you say you were, you was the better kid, in what way? Were Not getting in trouble as much as they did. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. And so, but should you know where your anger come from in order to overcome it? Yeah, I don't know where it come from, but I know where it went. The Lord took it away. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. I know he took it away, saved me by his grace, and well, I'm a new man. Let me ask you this, uh, Donna. In the Bible, in, in Genesis for it, as I've been talking about, it talks about the order of things. Mm -hmm. You know, in God, the way that God has ordained things to be. And that's God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. Mm -hmm. You agree with that order? Yes, I agree. Well, when you're preaching, you're preaching over men. You're over men. Do you think that's right to do that? Well, when I'm preaching, I don't look at it as I'm saying anything. I look at it as God is saying it. And, you know, and I always address them, look, you know, I am ministering to myself as well as anyone else. Right. And I'm not going to tell him anything outside what the Word says. I'm like, well, this is my opinion. I don't do that. You know, it's God's Word. What always. would you do if your pastor say you could not be a preacher? If he told you, I'm not going to let you preach, you're not going to stand in the pulpit, would you accept that? Yes, because God would play something else. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Because I'm, I keep, I, I'm not, I say a preacher, okay? Usually when I'm up there, I'm teaching uh -huh. rather than <laughs> preaching. Okay. Because everybody says, you know, I'd ask them, well, you know, how did you like the message? They said, well, we like it when you're there because you teach us. And when he's up there, he preaches. Okay. So it's really kind of different, you know. Right. It's called whenever I'm up there, it's because there's a special occasion. And there's something, certain something that I need to really get a deep study on and, and give it to them. Uh, so you say you came from a bad background as well. Well, no, just when we were together. Um uh, say not a bad background. My mom and dad were very strict. Uh, we didn't say no. <laughs> that did not even come in a thought in our mind. And we were raised good. We were good. But we did not have God in our family. Oh, I see. They never, I, I, truthfully, I don't ever remember them even mentioning God's name. Really? But as far as good, good people. But are, God wasn't there. Are they still living? Uh, no, they're both dead. They're both dead. Mm -hmm. And why do you think they never mentioned God? Well, my mom was raised in an atheist family. Oh, I see. And my dad, he uh, played music on weekends, worked at a station all during the week, come home, you know, supper was ready, went to bed, and that was about it. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot that went on. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, now I can think back, and whenever I come to know God, I asked him to erase the memories I didn't need. Keep the ones that I could, that I could enjoy. And I, I can think back, and I don't remember a lot of the years. It's like they wasn't there. Because our family was so just plain, there was nothing exciting about any certain day. It was just we were there. How old are your children? My children? Yeah. My oldest girl is uh, 38. And then I got a boy under her, and I, I've got, we've got, Seven all together. Oh, okay. Or I do. That's from different marriages, right? Yes. Oh, okay. he, he's got two besides that. I see. And are they turning out well? Right now they are. <laughs> That's good. Because we've been staying in prayer for them, and I just, I said, God, I, I'm going to stay on it till my kids are right. And they're all coming around to the Lord just really strong. I'm so proud. Yeah. Why did your other marriages fail? I was too young at the first one. And the second one, uh, it wasn't God put together either, you know. Uh, he was abusive. Uh, he was always gone. Okay. 
doing his own thing, you know. And I was raising kids by myself at the house, and it just, you know, it just got to the point that I either had to leave or stay abused all the time, so. Yeah. How about you, Pastor Richard? Why did your other marriages fail, or the marriage? marriage? Partly, it's what I call a leave it to beaver syndrome. You ever watch the show Leave it to Beaver? Yes, I used you, to watch it all when, the time. When Ward comes home, June has always got supper cooked, the house is always clean. And you know, when I come home, and I work in oil field, you never know when you're getting home. Right. And I had that idea in my head, I want my supper cooked just as soon as I walk in the door. Now what if I come in at 9 o'clock at night and, and you know, how does she know what time I was going to get there? Right. <laughs> Back in those days, they really wasn't cell phones. You didn't call home and say, hey, I'm coming home, have my supper cooked. You know, and I thought that, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be. When you walk in, your supper's cooked, you sit down to eat, your house is clean, and that didn't happen. <laughs> and you would be angry about it? I'd be mad about it. Oh, I see. Or she'd be gone, wouldn't be at home. Oh, she would not be home when you get from work. Right. And, and why not? Well, her, her parents lived, uh, worked in the bar, her mother did, and her grandmother, and she'd be there visiting them. Oh, I you know, see. And, and that really didn't go yeah, over with me, good. you know. Yeah. At that point in my life, I didn't drink that much. Right. So it just angered me she'd be down there at the bar. Yeah, I would be angry too. Were you a hard, a, a hard person to live with? No, not not really. Not back then, I wasn't. Oh, I see. So after I, the divorce, I got, that's when I started drinking real bad. And So the marriage, it sounded like the marriage brought the anger and alcohol on. The breakup of the marriage. That's probably right. Were you in love with her? Yes, I was. Yeah. Are you over it now? Or are you still? Oh over? yes, we were young too. Yeah. I was 18 by one week when we got married, and she was oh. 16 by one day. Wow. You know, so we was pretty young. Yeah, that's too young. I want to talk to you about sin. As Christians, is it possible to be a Christian and still sin? Yes. Do you say yes too? Yes, sir. You say yes. And how is that? Well, you know, we live in fleshly bodies. And, you know, sometimes we'll slip up. The, the point you need to get at is, do you, are you intentionally going out to sin? Or are you just sin and, and not knowing it, then you, then you come back and you repent about it? So both of you still sin? Yes, from time to time, we're, you know, we're only humans. What type of sin do you commit? Oh, I might get lose my temper every now and then. You get angry. You know, I, I jumped at church here a while back. It's someone, my son, that wouldn't be quiet, you know, while I was trying to get everybody's attention. And yes. So I, I public, you know, right in front of the church, apologized, you know. But things like that. And Donna, what type of sins do you commit? <laughs> my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you can get really tired sometimes, but, you know, uh, they know me. And so you, you get angry at your children? Yeah, my older kids. Well, my older kids, they're all teenagers, but we're raising our granddaughter. Oh. And she's five right now, so. But it's the older ones, you know, because I guess I get kind of a holy anger because I, I, I want them to listen to me. And sometimes when they want, I'm, I want to shake them and say, now look, I'm trying to tell you something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Bible says that if a man or a woman say that they are born again, and they sin, they are lying, the truth is not in them. Right. And so, and that's true, right? Mm -hmm. So if the Bible says that, and it also tells us to be perfect as God is perfect, mm -hmm. be holy as God is holy. So if, if the Bible says that we should not be sinning as men and women of God, mm -hmm. and that we should become perfect, how come Christians are saying that we can sin and accepting mm -hmm. that as being true if God said we can't? Now, there's two different ways you sin. Uh, one way is when you make the mistake. And the Lord says, I paid for that. But a mistake is not but, a sin. A mistake a is like when you well, stop Well, that's your a mistake, yeah. But if you deliberately sin, then I'm saying the truth isn't in you. If you just deliberately sin. But it doesn't say, Pastor, it doesn't say if we deliberately sin. It's that if we sin, period. Because mm -hmm. once you're born again, you have a new nature, right? And that new nature... It's a sinless nature. Mm -hmm. and, and so how, how, why, I don't understand. Okay, we, we, uh, when we become Christians, we're baby Christians. It takes years of years of growing to get where you need to be. And I don't feel like you ever need to be 
you'll get where you totally where you need to be. You know, as babies, they, they start to walk and they fall down, don't they? Right. And they get back up and they keep going until they start walking. That's the same way as Christians. We, we start, we, you know, we accept the Lord and we start going, working our walk for the Lord. And But when you're born, a, when we you're born again, don't you have a new nature? You no longer yeah. have yes. that sinful nature, right? That's right? You don't have that sinful nature, right? Well, no, it's not really sinful nature. It's just you, it's fine you make mistakes. But give me an example of a sin that is a mistake. Because I hear that a lot. You make mistakes. <laughs> I, I don't know how a sin is a mistake. Uh, sometimes you can uh, start to minister to someone that's come to you for help. And uh, to me, if you don't really know that person, sometimes you can misjudge that person on some things and tell them the wrong thing, you know. I, I like to maybe, maybe trip them up sometimes, and you don't realize the words you're saying is not the right words. Uh, to me, to minister to somebody, you have to be a good listener first. And a lot of people just get out there to, to talk to someone, and they get on the wrong track. And, see, and that, that, to me, I wouldn't call but it a sin, it's a mistake. But if know? they're on the wrong track, and they're ministering, and that means that they have not been born again. They, because if you're born again, aren't you guided by the light? of God where you can see and when you can see you don't make mistakes like that okay this is for this is something I've been thinking about because yes. to me if you're a pastor then you need to be walking with God all the way you can't help but walk with God because if, yeah if God called you as right. a pastor he also guides you right right and so if he's guiding you you don't make mistakes like that right so if maybe you listen to him but how there can are you, those that you know, the Holy Spirit's telling you, hey, man, don't go here. And you still got your own free will. And there's those that, well, you know, man, I love doing this or that. And you, you kind of get over there. You don't really realize that it's wrong. Well, it's impossible that maybe those people were not called by God. Yes. They thought that they were. That's where I was going right. to go because a lot of churches, I say churches, a lot of pastors that are pastoring or teachers are not really called. You know, right? And they're out there ministering, and that's where I guess you know they make the mistakes because that's not their their position to be called in. Right. So then, if a person is sinning, then maybe they thought they were saved or called, and they were not. Yes. So you can't sin then if you're born of God. To me, you can't sin. You just make a mistake because <laughs> they make a mistake. The, it's it's kind of hard to put the word sin in there. Because there's so many people that are walking, say walking with the Lord, and to me they're not. Right. So when they're making these sin mistakes, mm -hmm. then they're making them because they're not born of God, right? I don't think they're born of God. I think they're born in the mind, not the heart. Right. So then, I'm back to that same question then. You can't be born of God and sin. You can't, not in that way, call sin. I, I call it uh, sinning because everybody else calls it that. It's making a mistake. You make mistakes. Let me you know, we do make mistakes. Let me ask you, Pastor, <laughs> about your anger. Can you be born of God and still have anger? Yeah. How is that? Because Did not Jesus go in the temple and get angry because they were selling inside the temple and throw them out and got a whip after them and run he, them out of the temple? But He had, he had a, a holy anger. Right. So holy is your anger. anger holy? Yes. So if it's holy, why did you have to apologize for it? Because I don't think I needed to set something in front of others. But sometimes you have to raise your voice at people exactly. because they won't get it otherwise. Exactly. Right. And why did you apologize for that? I don't like raising my voice to someone. Why not? <laughs> it kind of embarrassed him. You know? That's okay. They need to be embarrassed. Well, not always. You don't need to be embarrassed. Not always. No. But sometimes, <laughs> I mean, as a preacher, it's your job to get the sinner's attention. Right. Yes. And if it means raising your voice, as long as you don't have that unrighteous anger, if it means raising your voice, you have to do it. Yes. You agree with that? Right. So why apologize then? Because it wasn't the right time when I raised my voice at that time. Oh, you were wrong? I th feel I was wrong, yes. Did you think it was the right time at the time? Because I wanted everybody's attention. That's right. why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Donna, it's, it's a, it's, and I'll ask you this too. Your husband, what type of man is he? He's a quiet man. 
Uh, he's one that keeps to himself. He's not one that would mess in anybody's business, you know, unless he's asked to. Uh, he's very loyal to, to his congregation. You know, if they come to him in secret, then it's in secret. You know, it, it's just him. He's very loyal right. to anybody that comes to him. This is a man that stands on his word. What do you wish that he would stop doing? If God gave you the power to change him, what would you change about him? Stop holding back. Holding back, yeah. I think that he has got more there he can give if he would just do it. Right. And why do you hold, is that true about you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> You're not sure? Pardon me? You're not sure if it's true about you or not? I probably hold back quite a bit more than I should. And why do you hold back? We have about one minute left in this segment. Why do you hold back? I really don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm just, I, I really, I'm so worried about hurting somebody's feelings. But how are you, you know, going to be a man of God, me. a preacher man, and worry about hurting somebody's feelings? Well, you know, certain areas. I don't hold back when I'm going to tell them that they're sinning or something. But I wouldn't hold back, period, in any area. Yes, you would. Why? You know, it's I like, wouldn't. Yes, you would. <laughs> <laughs> if your wife come to you with a question and you really didn't want to tell her the whole thing, you'd hold back part of it, No, you? I would tell her the whole thing. <laughs> he probably would. <laughs> yeah, no. Are you afraid to tell your wife the whole thing? No, not her. Not her, but other people. Yeah, sometimes. We're gonna t we're gonna we're at the bottom of this half hour, and uh, in the next half hour, I want you to tell me why and what what kinds of things you will hold back on. All right. Thank you for tuning in. I mean, coming in, and thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next time. God bless. It's not the leaders that blacks need but good fathers and mothers. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're doing a two-part series with Pastor Richard and Donna Friday, and they, from, they are from Wings of Mighty Prophecy, Prophecy in Midland, Texas. Yes. Thank you guys for staying over. Uh, what I want to do first is to give out your address or phone number or something where people can get in touch with your church. Okay. Well, we're in Midland at 2207 West Rhode Island. And we're a small church. It's, you drive by, it's not a big, beautiful church like a lot of the rest of them. But, you know, just like the way I come to church, I dress, I dress like this right here. I say we're looking at what's on the inside, not the outside. Yes. So don't judge our church by the outside. Come inside and see what it's all about. <laughs> That's right. And what's the uh, phone number or address again or something? So that the phone number is 683-1959. Okay. And the address again is 2207 West Rhode Island in Midland, right. Texas. Um, Last time we were talking about holding back, you said you tend to hold back. And why do you hold back? Well, a lot of times, uh, we first started our church, we had a lot of particular one de denomination. And the Lord had really brought me more out into the gifts of the Spirit and stuff. And, and I wouldn't be, you know, really trying to push them as much as I wanted them to get. You know, but now they're they're seeing the gifts of the spirit working in the church Amen. and stuff, and and now I'm not holding back the way I used to, and you can really tell it in my preaching here lately. Yeah. It's been on fire preaching, you know, and I'm just praising the Lord for it because, you know, like you said, I, you got to quit holding back. That's you right. Know, get get the yeah. word of God out there, and and man, it now that I'm just getting it out there after service, you know, I'm. I'm pumped up, you know. That's right. Man, I love it. I love what the Lord just done here, yeah. you know. Just yeah. let him, let the gifts work, you know. And that's what's been happening here lately. We've just been allowing the gifts to work in the Spirit, not holding them back. And, and miracles have been happening. That's right. And if people don't like the truth, that's on them. You know, you have a responsibility to put it out there and let them deal with it. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, and there are some that will hear and receive, and there are some that will not. So, but that's up to them. Right. That's up to them. Um, I want to, what, what is salvation? What is salvation? Salvation is a new life. It's a, 
your life changing. A new life. It's a new life. It's a new life. And, and it, it changes from life. what to what? From knowing, uh, I say, from this world to another world that is beautiful, that is good, that is right, that is eternal, that is fresh. It's there won't no more hurts and pains, no more worries. It's totally changed. Salvation is freedom. What is the evidence that one has been born again? They have received salvation. What is the evidence of that in their life? Well, you know, you'll see their lives change around. You know, they'll realize the things they've been doing wasn't right. You know, and they'll realize, hey, going in that bar or chasing women, you know, and out of wedlock and you know they're married but chasing other women and stuff like that they realize yeah. it's wrong and you can you, you know that's evidence of it that the lives change around their language you know you've been around people that's not saved filthy stuff coming out of their mouth constantly you right. know yeah. and when it's when they accept the Lord they'll say something like that and the Holy Spirit tells them hey you know that's wrong you know and they they'll quit doing it and so we are born from what? We're born in, from sin. From sin. Yes. Okay. So I've noticed that when you're born again, you're no longer a prideful, egotistical kind of a person. Yeah. You, if someone tells you something truth about yourself, you can accept that. Wow. And if they're wrong about what they say, then you just forgive them for it, but appreciate that they said it. Yes. You don't take things personal in life. Yes. anymore. Is right. that true? I believe yes. that's true, yes. It's a totally different nature. Let me ask you this about the race issue. Uh, as preachers, men mm -hmm. and women of God, uh, do you think America is a racist society? Oh, yes. You think so? It uh, It is. Do yeah, you think like is. whites are racist toward blacks or both. is this the other way around? It's just both ways. Both ways. Yeah. How about you, Pastor? I think it is too. You think white folks are racist toward blacks and blacks are racist toward white? Yeah. I think it's all, you know, even the Spanish. There's a lot of Spanish in this area. And I hear people sometimes all the time, I wish they'd go back to Mexico and stuff, you know. Hey, we're all God's children. Right. You know, he don't look at our skin. Are they talking about illegal Mexicans or? They're talking about all. They're talking about all of them. Just all. Yeah. They, they put it as one word, general, Mexicans are blacks, you know. And I'm saying, look, you're talking about an individual person. I said, don't put them all together in one. I said, that one person may be wrong, but that doesn't give them all wrong, you right. know. Right. Um, I wish that uh, President Bush would close the borders so that the Mexicans can't come in through the back door. Is that racist of me to wish that? I don't think so. I feel that myself. Yeah. But, you know, what the reason is, we're losing jobs. Right. Our people are losing jobs. Yeah, we're suffering I, that's for the it. way I feel about it. And and if they more can come over here, and every time they want an extra vote, this is my opinion. Yeah. If, every time the president wants an extra vote, you know he'll do something like I'm gonna just pardon this, pardon that. You know that's not right. Right. I agree. Just, so is that is it's not it's not Donna. It's not is it racist to feel that way? I kind of feel a little different. How do you, you feel? You know. Uh, what are they coming over here for? Well, some are coming. Maybe they're hungry. Maybe they need some freedom. Maybe they are looking for a home that they never had, looking for a way for their lives to change, you know? Right. You know, you got to, it, like saying everybody in general, you're not saying black, you're not saying Spanish or whatever. This individual person, what do they need? You know, we need to stop talk to that individual person that's trying to get here. I know, but they're breaking the law by coming in. Yeah, they're breaking they the law. Should they come in the front door? Come in the front door, but we should be more open-minded to what's going on. I can understand why they want to come here. You know, yeah. I know that their yeah. area is a, Mexico is no right. good, but still, I don't want them coming in through the back door because no. some of them are coming in bringing crime and drugs. True, they're right. taking jobs. But they got to be screened. They want to take yeah. over America, so they're not coming here. Many of them are not right. coming for the right reasons, and if they can come in the front door, then we can kind of. Weed Screen out it. who to yeah. let in and who not. But right. maybe some of them are trying to get here that are coming through the back door because they can't get through the other way, and they're really needing help. We got to well, be. What they should do is make Mexico clean up its mess. 
Yeah, he needs to. They can to. force the government to do the right thing in Mexico then. Yeah. That, is that true? That's true. I've noticed, what, I've noticed that most black people are screwed up. You know, most of them, not all. Not yeah. all, not all. But right. most are not men and women of God. They're not yeah. suffering because of racism. They're suffering because of sin. Right. They're angry. You know, mm -hmm. They hate everybody and their mama. Right. They don't clean their own neighborhood. They're having babies out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. Do you guys deal with that in your church? Do you tell black people they need to get over it? I've talked to a few. Uh, right now, there's a uh, few Spanish that comes around, but I don't see very many blacks right now. My kids have black friends, and, you know, I love them just as much as do the others. Uh, Are you afraid to tell black people the truth, thinking that they mm -hmm. would think you're racist? No. Uh, how about you? No, I'm not. Yeah. We're just, Cause there's just white not that people, many coming to our church. Some white have people are afraid to tell black people the truth. How do you know that? Yeah, I, I've got uh, <laughs> two black nieces, and I've got several Spanish nieces and nephews. Really? So, you know, but we're family. <laughs> you know. How did that happen to you? Uh, my niece married a black man, and uh, his name was Sammy, and I know we loved him just as much. He's a good man. Oh, you know, yeah, they stayed yeah. in trouble a lot, but he's a good man. And they had two kids together. Is she still married to him? No, she's not living. Uh, she's not what? She's not living. Oh, she she's died. Dead. And oh, they, okay. they divorced before that, but an aunt is raising the kids. But, uh, a and they're aunt. way off in another yes. town, so oh, we don't ever get to see them anymore, but... Uh, you know, I wish I could. Then we have a nephew that, that married a Spanish woman when he was evangelizing in, in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Mm. So he was over there a few years evangelizing and married her, and they have three kids. Wow. Mm -hmm. Was that hard to accept when you saw your family messing up like that? No, no not for us. No. It wasn't. It wasn't mm -hmm. hard. I know the family members, it was hard for them, <laughs> but nah, it's just, you know, I've seen the individual and. Like Dora, she's one of the on fire women I've, sweet, you'll ever meet. Sweet you know, so. yeah. Is Dora black? She's Spanish. No, she's Spanish. She's Spanish. Right. See, and also where she come from, uh, she she had a lot of brothers and sisters. Her mom had died. Uh, she was helping raise the kids. That she died giving birth to twins. Uh, Dora had to become mom at a very young age. Yeah. They had dirt floors, no electricity, no nothing. So when he met her and brought her here, Man, it's like bringing her paradise. You know, this is all good for her. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You got to know what's the situation. Yes. But we still should close the border, so I think. Yeah. You, you, know, you can close your border. Yeah. <laughs> you go close that border anyway. Yeah. But, you know. but we, we do need to listen to them. We yeah. need to talk to them. We need more missionaries to go over there and list to these people and see what they need. That's right. Exactly. Uh, the churches, not all of course, but most of the churches are not doing what they should be doing. Right. The churches are weak today. Mm -hmm. Why is that so many churches are weak? One opinion of mine. Yes. They don't want to run off the money people in their church. I agree. <laughs> That's right. They it's don't want to say money. what they really need to say because they're scared to death that they're not going to get that paycheck. Yes. Or the money's not going to come in to run their church. Well, they're I looking agree. at the wrong person to run their church. They need to look for the Lord to run the church and not their money people. Amen. I totally agree. Donna, I noticed, noticed that most men are weak today. Have you noticed that? Yes. And why are most men so weak today? I think they're afraid. Of what? Of the world, what's happening. They're afraid their jobs might not be there. They're afraid they might not be able to support their family. Uh, might not be able to... Play, be that role, that strong role for the family they're supposed they're supposed to be, because of things coming on around the world. But a man should be willing it. to take that on, though. Should be, but they don't understand what's coming on. They don't know what's happening. They're scared of what they can't see. Do you think women are stronger than men? I think they have to be. So you think that they are? Yeah, I, I really think they are because, not in the way of this way, but in the way of heart wise, you know, because. I don't know, they're just, they have more patience and they, they just put up with more. Do you think men are, women are stronger than men? Not physically, <laughs> for sure. Right. Yeah. But in some cases mentally, yeah, I think they are. How about overall? Are women stronger than men? Or? No, I don't think so. 
<laughs> are you surprised to hear that Donna think that women are stronger than men? No, I, I know that's the way she feels. Yeah, but you know she's wrong now. Yeah. yeah, you know, she can be wrong. I still love her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I kind of have to agree with Donna, though. I know a, a man should not be weaker than a woman, but yeah. most men are weaker than women are. Not, I don't think that women are strong. I think that women, not all, not all, not all, not all, not all, not all. You hear me saying not all, not all, not all. I think that women are weaker than men and just that men are weak, so it makes women look like they're strong. I think that most women, I mean, it makes women look as though they're strong. I think most women are willful and controlling and, and, and intimidating like mama used to intimidate us as children. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of men end up marrying mama and they don't know how to deal with it. Right. Am I right about that? Yeah, I think so. All right. So it's women are willful and not strong. Am I right? Right. Okay. And so what would you say to men that, are, that have to deal with these women? How should they deal with these willful, controlling women? Well, first off, you didn't marry your mama. <laughs> you married your wife. Treat her as a wife. You know, and treat your mom like your mom. She's the one raised you. But, but how do they stand up to the anger of a woman? What would you say to them how to stand up to it? A lot of women are angry, and they, they don't want to be told that they're angry. They don't want to hear the truth about themselves. They want to control you. How should men deal with that? Just go with them with love, you know, and tell them, hey, I love you. But at this point in your life, you're trying to control me. You know, let's put a halt on it. Let's talk about this situation. Let's see what we need to do to change this. You know, if we want to make this marriage work, we're going to have to sit down and talk about it. Yeah. And, of course, you know, the man should say, you know, I have problems too. I see that too. Let's just get it out in the open. Let's talk about it. Yeah. You agree with that, Donna? Yeah, I do. Uh, do you agree that most women are willful and controlling? I think it's because uh, they're, they're raising their kids. So they're there with them all day long. And then when the husband comes in, She's going to be out to do him the same way, you yeah. know, because that's what you've been doing all day, you know. And uh, you just have to kind of back yourself down. A woman needs to think about what they're doing. You know, come back down and understand that this is your half, not your child, you know, that they are equal to you. Uh, we should talk things, not be over each other. We didn't sign a paper of, of ownership, we signed an agreement of marriage. Yes. You know, and that's what we need to re remember. You're right marriage. in that they do, they are acting that way all day. Yes. And you can see it in the children because what, what these women are doing is right. in their willfulness, they're turning the kids into willful mm -hmm. children too. You know, right. they're trying to impose their, yeah. themselves upon the children. And kids tend to rebel against that. Right. What what would you say to those women that are doing that to the children too? Wake up, because you know maybe it sounds all right right now while you're teaching them young, but when they grow up, you want them to get married. You want them to have a, a good life, not one that's going to wind up divorcing in a year because right. of this. You know they need to wake up and stop. But a lot of women are doing this because they're left. The husbands leave leave them with kids, they don't stay with them and support them. The woman has to be a man and a woman, yes. both. She has to get out and support them, has to work, you know, a job and come home tend to them also. So it makes them hard-hearted, it makes them strong-minded, you know. Yes. But you need to also remember that, you know, your kids are going to follow your footsteps. Don't give them the wrong way to walk. Yes. Would you agree to that? Yes. Yeah. Um, first of all, you know, always let them see God in you. First, yes. you know, take them to church, give them the word, you know, and that's most important right there. Let them see God in you. But you also have to be that living example, right? right. Even in the homes, because a lot of kids are turning away from God because the parents go to church and they lift up holy hands at church, but when they get home, they're mm -hmm. holy hell. Right. Yeah. And so exactly. the kids say, well, you know what? This is a hypocrite. If this is what God is like, I don't want to be a part of it. That's right. What do you say to people that are doing that? Uh, it's wrong. And you're not godly, and God sees every bit of it. Right. I worked with a guy one time, and I was trying to get him to come to church, and he told me flat out, he said, why should I go to church? 
said, everybody I know that goes to church is doing exactly the same thing I'm doing. That's right. And I said, you that's know what? Right. Those guys are just going to church. They don't know the Father. But that's why we can't accept this idea that you could be a man or a woman of God and still sin. Because if, if you're going to still sin and act this way, then what is there to entice wow. the sinner to come to God? Nothing's going to yeah. change. You're going to be wow. the same person. Wow. And so, you know, there should be a difference in a, in a Christian and a non-Christian. Right. Well, I believe that, you know, you, you, if you come to God, you should never sin again. You know, they say you can't live, uh, live, live a sinful life. You can if your mind is, is, is on God. Your heart's on God. You're looking straight to God. But churches nowadays, they, I mean, they don't just go by rules and regulations. They're not going by the love of God. Why are we speaking out against that? Why do other Christians allow these preachers to get away with that kind of stuff? They, people accept it. But why? I don't know, quite know why. I don't know why either. I think, well, okay, I guess I do know why. Because we are moving into end times. And in order for the devil to show his face, the church, not God's church, I'm saying church, the world's church, is going to have to be set in place for that church to accept the devil when he comes, for the Antichrist to come. Yeah. That he's going to have to go have the right kind of praying mind for him to come in and fool the people of the world. Amazing. Uh, marriage, should, one, should we only get married once in life? Unless our mate dies, should we only get married once? We should strive for that. Why so many people getting married in, in the Christian community? Why are they getting married so many times? If God says we should only be married once until death do us part, why are they doing it over and over? And why is that being accepted? Too many people are, are, are not waiting on the Lord. They pray for the Lord for a husband. And then the first guy comes along, they think, all right, this is the guy, you know, right. or this is the woman. And they take mm -hmm. them to go get married and realize later, well, you know, that wasn't God that put us together. That's this right. guy don't even go to church. I've seen so many that divorce a guy for not doing a certain thing and then go to the bars looking for another guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just divorce this one because he drank. Then you go to the bar looking for another one. Uh -huh. Aren't you going to get one that drinks if you go to the bars? You need to go to church. Mm -hmm. And you find somebody that's rooted in church. If you go out with them a few times or, or a long time, you'll, you'll know that person. You'll know if they go to the bars or if they're just putting up a front or whatever. And they should not, during a dating period, they should not be having sex and all that. But just, exactly. just getting to know the person right. and then wait until marriage for the sex. Right. Because if you have sex before marriage, you would never know the person. That's right. Because sex feels like love, even though it's mm -hmm. not. It feels like love. That's right. And if... You know, you go out with someone and the first thing on their mind is that. Yeah. That person's not a God. That's right. If you go out with someone that cares about you and your feelings and talk about you and take you places you like to go and drop you off at the house and maybe give you a kiss on the cheek or whatever and see you next Saturday night or whatever, you know that person cares about you. That's right. And not about the sex. I agree. You know, uh, I want to ask you this. Pastor Richard mentioned we should go to church. We should go to church, and I hear that a lot. Yeah. Why is it so important to go to church? Well, I don't look at that. I think we need to go before the Lord. You know, uh, whether it's your home, or whether it's in a building, a church they call, or where it's at. You know, you need to go before God and ask Him. Anything you do, you need to go before God and right. ask Him, "Is this right?" So we don't have to go to church to no. do that, right? You, the the altar is right in front of you. Right. All you got to do is drop right there. So wh what's yeah. the purpose of going to church then? Why do we need to, to go To fellowship at all? together, to learn to live together right. with the Word, you know. To build each to other come up. To come to listen to the Word, to lift God up. To If you're praising together, you're not going to hurt each other. Right, to fellowship. Yeah, right. to fellowship. Encourage one another. Um, the few minutes that we have left, how can a person know when they're in the wrong church? What are the signs of a wrong church? First, I think you need to pray before you go to any church. Just because it's the domination that you're used to going to, pray. The Lord, when you go to that church, you're going to feel good about it or you're not going to feel good about it. Right. And I've been to churches that 
great churches, you know, but that's not where the Lord told me to go. And the Lord has sent me different places and different churches to do different things. And, and each time it was a different situation and I would do whatever the Lord told me to do at that particular place and He'd move me somewhere else. But I was willing to go. But if you're in a church that's... If you see like the people we were just talking about coming on Sunday mornings and, and then the rest of the week doing things they're not supposed to, I don't think you need to be in that church. Yeah. If, yeah. Not if just one individual in that church is doing it. But if you see the whole church in general doing it, you know, God's not in that church. Donna, what is the Holy Spirit? It's God inside. It's God inside? God inside. And do everybody have it already? No. How do you, how do you get it? You believe that God will give it to you first. You've got to believe that God is. The Spirit does come from God. And then you got to believe you can have it. Because a lot of people, they'll say, well, I need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you know. And they're sitting there waiting for it. I mean, I did this. And I said, God, I'm not getting up. I'm not moving until I get it. <laughs> you know? And it's like that. And I believe that it had to be this big thing coming inside. It's not. It's just believing. And God said, I will give you my spirit if you just ask me. What's the purpose of the Holy yes. Spirit? To lead and guide us. Amen. To to tell us when we're doing something wrong or fixing to do something wrong. And the Holy Spirit also, He'll show you things in the Spirit. You know, I remember praising and worshiping one time in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit told me to go a certain place. I was going down and for, to prevent certain things or to help someone. Yes. I was going down the road one day, and just out of the blue, the Lord told me to go visit a certain person. I told my wife, had the wife and the kids all in the car, I said, I've got to go over to this person's house. Something's wrong. Went to that house and his wife walked out the door and, and I, I said, what's wrong? You know, She said, well, he got the hose off the vacuum cleaner and a bag of cocaine. He's going to kill himself. Hmm. So I just took them home and said, Lord, where is he? And the Lord just took me right to him to prevent that. That's, you know, that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. To guide so were us. you able to stop him? Yes, I was. Oh, yeah. He's still yeah. living today. Is the Holy Spirit a voice? I mean, do you hear a voice? Not when, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you? Not all the time. Most of the time it's just that feeling you get in your gut. It just mm -hmm. speaks to you. Okay. It's like a new one. Let me do this. Uh, we're running out of time, and I want to be fair to you guys because last week I didn't give out your address. Give out the phone number and address to your church so people can get in touch with you. The phone number is 683-1959. And we do have a sale number. It's 631 9026 and then our address is 2207 West Rhode Island Midland Texas and the church is called Wings of Mighty Prophecy Wings of Mighty Prophecy we call it Womp. short for WAMP <laughs> WAMP yeah we're going to WAMP all over Satan <laughs> well I appreciate you guys coming on with me oh uh, we appreciate it did you enjoy it I sure enjoyed did. it yeah uh, you said it wasn't what you thought it, was it better or worse than what you thought it would be? No, oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Just kick back situation and yes. just talk. And you know, I've seen so many different shows that I thought we were just going to open the Bible up and go to every page and <laughs> break it down or whatever. I enjoy this. That's Thank boring, you. huh? Isn't it boring to just kind of sit there and go through the Bible? Sometimes it is. Yeah. Yeah. Boring, huh? <laughs> what to me, when you go to church, why go if you're going to just cry? That's right. Go and have fun. You know, smile, yeah. lift up the Lord. Uh, we have Thanks. people dancing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, guys, for tuning in. Hi, my name is Jesse Lee Peterson. I host the Jesse Lee Peterson Show here on God's Learning Channel. I'd like to invite you to write me, call me, let me hear from you, email me. If you have any questions or concern about what we deal with on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. We reveal the lies so you can see the truth. We expose the false black leaders. We expose false black preachers. We deal with relationships. We want to set people free here on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. We're going to put our address up, our phone num number and email. So if you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you have some questions and, uh, about the show, comments about the show, disagree or agree with us, let us hear from you. The Jesse Lee Peterson Show here on God's Learning Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate the letters and phone calls.
that we have already received. I want to make it clear, I am an American. No African American here, here, 100% American. Jesse Lee Peterson, thank you. Order your audio or video copy today from the GLC Bookstore. Please include the program number when ordering.